Men in the middle attacks create a fake Wi-Fi network for victims to connect to, allowing you to hijack and even control their data connection. We'll show you how to create a man in the middle network using the Pumpkin Pi, a Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux that uses the Wi-Fi pumpkin attack on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Because most devices only store the name of the network and not any other information, it's relatively difficult to detect an evil access point or a fake access point when you're connected to one. If you want to create one as a hacker, it's not that difficult to do so. In fact, you can use this $35 Raspberry Pi to create a configurable evil access point using the Wi-Fi pumpkin. Now, what you'll need in order to do this is this Alpha wireless card or any other Kali compatible wireless network adapter, because you'll need to be able to easily start an access point and it helps to be able to plug into Ethernet. Now you can use, also use the Raspberry Pi's onboard uh, Wi-Fi chip to connect back to a network. However, it's important to have some sort of stable Wi-Fi connection in order to entice users to use this kind of watering hole. Now, if you're in a public place, you can even notice that if you create a common SSID like Google Starbucks or something like that, nearby devices might connect automatically just by being excited that you're there. So if you're deploying this in a public place, make sure you have permission to do so and don't audit this against kind of random strangers. Now, in order to get started, you'll need a monitor to plug this into, a computer to set up your Raspberry Pi's SD card uh, if you haven't already followed the guide. But if you have, then you can go ahead and plug this into a monitor. And if you followed our Raspberry Pi Kali Linux setup guide, you should be good to go. With that, we can begin. Now, the Wi-Fi Pumpkin is a framework for rogue Wi-Fi access point attacks. Now what that means is you're going to need to have a pretty strong Wi-Fi connection in, or, in order for this to work, either a Ethernet connection or another Wi-Fi connection already established. Otherwise you won't be able to really serve anything and people connecting to your hotspot will immediately just disconnect when it doesn't work, so you will need that before proceeding anyway. Now it's also worth pointing out that this will take quite some time in order to download on a Raspberry Pi, so if you have the ability to plug it into an Ethernet connection, you should do so well in advance of when you plan to use it. Now here we can see the GitHub page for the Wi-Fi pumpkin, and we can go ahead and copy after we click on clone or download to get the URL that we'll need in order to download this onto our Kali Linux system. Now here we'll type git clone, and then the link here. And on our system, we've already downloaded it, but on yours, it would proceed to download it. But this is a pretty short download. That's not what I was talking about. So let's then go ahead and CD into the Wi-Fi pumpkin and LS, and we'll see that there is a install file where, there it is, installer.sh. Now, if you just downloaded, downloaded this, you're going to need to uh, type sudo chmod plus x installer dot sh. Now what that does is give installer execution privileges and now we can just go ahead and run the following command in order to install all the various things that Wi-Fi Pumpkin will need in order to run. Now, this is quite a lot of stuff, so you're going to need to sit back and let this go for a while. Don't do this, again, if you have to be somewhere or if you need to unplug your Pi, because if you're installing it as root, you can end up uh, making a serious uh, mistake because you might have to reflash your card. So, uh, that's happened to me before. So, when you're ready, go ahead and type uh, sudo, well actually you're already root so you don't need to, I've just been in the habit because I've been using arch. So period slash installer dot sh tac tac install. Now fortunately for me I have already installed all this stuff but you guys will need to sit there for quite some time especially on a Raspberry Pi and especially over Wi-Fi if that's what you're using. Now, as soon as this is completely done, you will have all the tools that you need and you can see there's a mountain of stuff. And somehow, even though I just did this, I still have to download stuff. So you guys get a little taste of what it's like. Um, 
So you'll be stuck behind this green wall for quite some time. Uh, you might feel productive, you might feel like doing something else, but either way, uh, there are a lot of things that need to be installed. So uh, on the Raspberry Pi in particular, you may get a warning that Pillow cannot be installed or configured. Uh, this is really frustrating and you can go about trying to fix it, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it's not strictly necessary. When you get this prompt asking uh, why to continue, go ahead and press Y and it will install, modify, change, and do all sorts of stuff to a whole bunch of libraries that it needs in order for all the different modules within Wi-Fi Pumpkin to work. Now here you can see everything checks out and you can see that Wi-Fi Pumpkin installed with success. Uh, Wi-Fi Pumpkin installed with success. Uh, execute sudo Wi-Fi Pumpkin in terminal. Enjoy! All right, cool, so we're ready to go. So now we can just type sudo, sudo Wi-Fi pumpkin, and we should be able to launch the weapon. There we go. So first it should be asking us where our network connection is. Oh, nope, it already knows. It was able to detect it. And we'll need to select a different network adapter in order for us to launch an attack. Now, we can't both be serving internet and also connected back to another network on the same network. So here we go, we will just click on WLAN 1, which is our second network card. Now you need to have a second wireless network adapter already plugged in at this point um, that is Kali Linux compatible. And so long as you have that, you should have, as you can see, two different options here, and we'll select the second one, whichever one is not in use here as the connection. Now we're going to create something that might solicit some automatic responses, uh, Google Starbucks. And we're going to leave off wireless security so devices might automatically just connect. Now let's go into settings and you can see there's pumpkin uh, proxy and I'll expand this a little bit so you guys can see better. There's pumpkin proxy intercepting HTTP data which just tells us what people are doing. There's SSL strip which attempts to downgrade um, some of the encryption. And then there's also DNS to proxy which can show us the uh, DNS requests and maybe learn a little bit more about what a individual person is looking to do. So here we can load some of these awesome plugins. Uh, some of these other things are only active when we're doing the attack. So why don't we get started and launch the network? So this is how easy it is to do. We can just hit start at any time and we should be able to start up a rogue access point. Now you would be surprised that it's so easy to create something as technological as a rogue AP, but there you go. After a long period of loading, you can just load one up and we can see that as soon as a device connects, we'll start to see a bunch of information appear about it. Now you can see we have a device, a Dell device that is attempting to connect. And it looks like after we have a successful connection, we can go to station and see we are connected. We have a um, Dell computer, it looks like, that is connected to us. And if we go to activity monitor, we can start to see information that tells us a little bit more about what exactly is connected to our fake uh, network. Now I can see that even though it says it's a Dell, it actually is a Mac OS computer based on this thing that we've intercepted which is a keep alive request. So that's pretty cool that we've already been able to uh, dig through this first layer of deception that I was trying to do on my Apple computer, but it looks like that uh, Pumpkin Proxy was able to see through that immediately. So next we can see there's an Android device connected. And if we go back to the activity monitor, we can see that there is some other stuff we can look at. Let's go to settings. And then we can also click on DNS to proxy and responder in order to enable some additional uh, settings in the activity monitor. Now, when we go back here, we can start to see that there's requests going in for different websites. And we can see that we learn more about what the person is doing individually as we look at these sorts of requests. Now we can interpret these and see that, oh, it looks like someone is trying frantically to navigate to leagueoflesbians.com. Now, it's interesting to note that anyone who connects to a rogue AP like this is exposing their information anytime they go to a website that uses HTTP rather than HTTPS. Now, this is interesting because when this person 
Oh, okay, well, we might need to blur that. Uh, when this person uh, navigates to a website that uh, uses HTTPS, we shouldn't actually see anything at all. Now, this is a powerful reason why websites need to start using HTTPS as much as possible, and you should avoid Oh, you should avoid navigating to websites that use HTTP like any of the ones you've just seen on the screen. Now, uh, there's a number of different things you can do here, such as loading the, the images, which I'm actually, I don't think I should do. And you can see that there's additional logging options and plugins you can employ to make this more useful. Now for the Raspberry Pi, if you have an ethernet connection that makes it uh, convenient to maybe pop one down in a place where a lot of people will be, a lot of devices will automatically connect if you select the name of the network wisely. So uh, this is a pretty powerful tool for anybody who wants to be able to create a discrete network that fits in your pocket and also has a lot of configurable options for how you create it, what you do with devices that are connected, and which plugins you use in order to intercept data and learn more about the devices that happen to connect as well as what they're doing. There are several ways that an attacker can make it more likely that users will connect to a fake access point. One is by creating a fake access point that has the same name as a coffee shop or other open Wi-Fi network that users likely have connected to before. This may make their devices automatically connect to it without having any intervention whatsoever. Now, a hacker can also just create a fake Wi-Fi network that has the name of a local business and pretend that they offer free Wi-Fi, which might not be noticed for quite some time. Now, the Raspberry Pi is an easy way that you can connect to any available Ethernet and create a fake hotspot, but be aware that you also are giving random strangers access to the internal network. So this is, if this is your network, you might want to be careful and make sure that you're not giving them access to your router or, or internal traffic without really thinking about it. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear it. We'll see you next time.